Here we are, just who we are once again, folks. Here on the channel, reading from the Secret Journal, A Spiritual Journey by Om Prakash. If you like what you're hearing, please subscribe, hit the bell, leave some comments, so that we can eventually monetize this channel in order to help bring more things to you in more creative ways. You can also visit our website down below. You can find the URL for that website. That's all we're picking up in our journal, journal entry 57. Journal entry 57. Troubling dreams last night about being a Unitarian Universalist. I seem to have several of them when I go into deep meditation. It seems that this dream was a repeat of the troubling dream I had the night before with different symbology to help me get the message. Except this time I called on my guardian to help interpret the dream. She was hesitant and only told me so much because she said it was up to my guide to tell me what it said. Apparently her role is one of protector. She is, in essence, just there to objectively take care of me by protecting me. She is very detached and very non-human. She is very single-minded and does not identify with the human condition very much or with their emotions, even though she tries to comfort me when I'm upset. The guides are different. They are like a part of the human soul that is inhabiting this body in this space and time, torn off and separate, living on a higher plane of existence, but always present. They see, they know, and they feel everything that is going on with the human being during their traveling experience because they are part of the greater self that the human being is. They teach, they bring comfort, they try to supply every need. They answer questions that the others are hesitant about answering. My guides like to let me find things out myself. They don't usually give me knowledge about things I haven't read or considered. Because they say it's up to me to find out that is part of my journey and why I came here. I have certain gifts that would seem somewhat psychic to some people, but only a limited number, they say. Knowing things from the blue is one of them. Even though sometimes I can beg and plead for answers from them, they are hesitant. This time I was able to do that. I had a strange dream about Trump. I was supposed to be watching him. I was in school again, except this was a film making high level university. As the final product, I was supposed to make a film about Trump, but I just couldn't get it going. I had it almost completed on my computer, but I couldn't find the computer I needed. It just disappeared. I was trying to work on three or four of them and they were inadequate. And then under a pile of trash, but connected to one computer, I found an ancient phone. I didn't know where it came from. That was the dream. I told that it was about me and my former lives and my returning over and over in an attempt to help heal the world during the worst times. And here was a Trump-like figure. Every time I returned, many had gotten this and had finished the project and had moved on. I hadn't finished and was desperately trying to find my computer with the last part of the information on it. I was told that I needed to stop. I didn't understand. I really don't know what it means to stop. To stop coming back and move on is what my guide says. You don't need to break the last attachment during your next lifetime. Break it now. It's not your job to save the world or stop and lead your life. 
if you like arguing about authoritarian leaders, do that. But that is not an obligation placed on you by me. You have placed it on yourself. And I wish you would stop. To me, you would feel like giving up. But she says, I wouldn't be giving up on anything. Because as the real I am always engaged. I hear that and will obey. Journal entry 58. My exploration is coming to a close. My attempt to cross the veil between the dimensions and timelines are and are not fruitful. Mentally and spiritually, I have been able to do so, but not for any large amount of time. When I have mentally and spiritually, I can never bring the two together. It seems that the two cannot exist at the same space at the same time. Even with these realities overlapping each other, there is still enough space for emptiness, more accurately, ether in between to permit them to be interwoven like a fine tapestry. One cannot walk in both worlds at once. And the body that we have in this reality must be changed in order to exist in the other. The body is changed when the mind moves out of it into the universe to explore new spaces. When that happens, the body transmutes itself and becomes the mind because the vibrational state that is required is that of the mind. The same occurs after death. The isness of the person is changed to something more spiritual because it is moving from one plane of existence to the next, where only things with the spiritual vibration can exist. If the mind is not a higher vibration, the spirit is in living, and the mind is dismantled and broken down to its more basic elements, and only reassembled when it returns to a place with a vibrational band where it can exist. This reassembly is what is known as karma and reincarnation. The ego has to actually be rebuilt by the circumstances in which one finds itself. That being said, one can only travel within the realms one is adapted to travel in. That is why I say my attempts to travel to other dimensions and timelines were successful, but not as I imagined. I wanted to take this body into a different timeline only to find that I am not moving this body into a different timeline. I am moving a different timeline to this body. This timeline is indistinguishable to the one that I was in previously. So it is almost impossible to determine it's a different timeline. The answer is that we are constantly changing timelines. And it is possible to do so in dreams and meditation, but the physical body, as it is, will have to stay where it is as our real selves or awareness moves from one place to the next. Journal Entry 59 I was planning to make my last journal entry, the one yesterday, my final one. Somehow I am being moved to continue to write. Everything is quiet today. I have strange dreams. I can't even remember the ones I had last night. The guides are quiet and informing me that I am on the right path and need to relax and allow them to open doors for me. That is what I will do. I have been projecting images of fear of failure into the future and remembering past failures throughout the night during my working hours only to cleanse them with Ho'opono. That seems to work very well. I am finding that practice is similar to sitting meditation that I practice. Both are very effective. Ho'opono ono can be done when you are on the move and don't have time to sit. My other meditation deserves, not requires, but deserves a place where you can sit and go deep. The going deep can be done quickly once you are used to doing it, but there is a quick expansion of the ego into the bliss. And most of the time, to be truthful, the ego does not want to come back. Most people don't realize that the ego began as a powerful, flexible, 
entity that was created to move us and guide us through whatever circumstances might arise. We, through our conditioning, end up freezing and calcifying it so it can no longer be the dynamic energy it was. It is constantly shifting and changing, but we are shoving the part that is different down into the subconscious instead of letting it change our personality. We think that the personality comes from the ego, so we cling to that. That is the case for those who aren't awake. But when one is awake, the true self becomes the root of the personality. So the personality is still stable, though more flexible. The higher ego remains at work and takes the place of the lower ego, that part that has been shaped and conditioned by the world in which we live. This higher form of ego or prajna paramita wisdom mind is the original ego. When it is reborn, we are enlightened. More than that, we are enlightened beings able to live effectively in the world in which we find ourselves. We close with journal entry number 60. I had a dream last night. There was a man in bed. He was an enslaved man around the time of the Civil War. He was old with white hair, laying in a very fancy bed in the slave owner's house. The slave owners were standing around him and nothing concerned, telling him that he was part of the family and that they were going to be attacked soon. They laid three bullets on the bed, gave him a gun, and told him that he had to get up and fight to protect the family. They reiterated how close they were as a family and how it would hurt them to see him have to get up and fight. He was very ill. He was on his deathbed. He looked at them strangely and picked up the gun and began to load the bullets in. There were three people talking to him and three bullets. As he was loading the bullets in, it seemed that he was thinking about killing them for their arrogance and cruelty. I woke up before I found what he was going to do. The meaning of the dream was apparent to me. The three bullets stood for the false counterfeit Christianity that had been given to most of the slaves to attain their loyalty and to make them willing to lay down their lives for the oppressors. The family is a representation of the U.S. who respects people of color and poor white people who are enslaved by the monetary system to go out and give their lives as frontline workers as the rich sit back, watch, and declare that we are all family. Why did I have this dream? I am not sure. I had another one that was similar that looked at an institution of which I was a part in the same way. It was in horrible condition. And then I went to a makeshift bathroom and began to use it as torrents of urine came gushing down the floor in a stream that overwhelmed the narrow gutter and ran into the soil. I was wearing sandals, so I had to keep moving my feet to make sure they didn't get wet. I wondered why the place was such a poorly kept shambles when they had tons of finances and resources. These dreams are about inherent evil, bigotry, and self-serving. The self-serving nature of the dominant culture. Note that I say the dominant culture. I am not talking about people of a certain race, gender, or ethnicity. I'm talking about the poison culture carried by many, and especially the rich, white, middle class to the rich group of people running the society and people of color who want to be like them. I think this is related to what my guides told me. They said they, we, won the war. I kept asking them, who we were and what our intentions were, but they kept refusing to tell me. This morning, one actually told me the war was over. Who would own the earth? Those who were the haters of humanity were vying for total control, using the evil people in high places. They were causing global warming and filling the air with pollutants that would mimic the atmosphere of the worlds they lived on. Because they had grown used to the pollution, it comes from advanced technology 
and the radiation to the point that it was difficult to live in a place without it. By recruiting evil humans, they got these humans to recreate the conditions of their planets on Earth as to wipe out many of the inhabitants on Earth so they could return and live here. This, of course, was totally illegal. There is a galactic law. The good ETs could not do anything about this because they are pledged not to interfere with the governments on Earth. The war was over. Who would be in charge of Earth? Since the evil ETs had already planned for a change in the Earth and a total restructuring of the atmosphere and the environment and had started during the battle, the good ETs are now able to take advantage of it before it becomes too extreme and to return to the Earth in large numbers before the evil ones can. The evil ones have been cast down even with their attempt of a scorched earth attack. The wise and benevolent ETs are coming now with the backing of most of the planets, especially the higher order planets, with more technology, knowledge, and power. This virus, plus the air pollution, plus the 5G, plus global warming, has allowed for more beings to be able to live on Earth. I don't know what it will look like, but according to my guides, if they weren't BSing me, or I wasn't just talking to myself, they're coming back already and someday their presence will be apparent. Their main goal is to clean up what the rulers of this earth for the last 250,000 years in the name of what lastly evolved into racial superiority have done. That is the end of the reading from chapter 60. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? It even sounds crazy to me. We'll pick up again very, very soon, starting with chapter 61. Thank you again.